Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, yes, I'm in a garage. It's got good lighting though, so we're all good. Today I wanted to share with you my experience that I had um, on a mushroom trip two days ago and how it completely transformed my life, but not in a nice, positive way, <laughs> as uh, some people may expect from doing a psychedelic. It's not all oh my goodness, I'm in another world and everything is great. Like, it's definitely, it wasn't like that at all. And I learned some very important lessons on this trip. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm here to share it with you guys. So if I look different, if I sound different, it's because I am different. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So just for some background information, uh, this is the first time that I've taken a full eighth of shrooms. Um, before that, I've done like basically micro dosing like I had never done more than like one and a half grams before so I felt like the surface effects of shrooms you know the colors being brighter the sounds sounding better um, and basically it felt like a really strong cannabis high um, but I had never gotten the full experience and also my intention before the trip was to work with the mushroom spirit and my higher self and cultivate basically the um, experience that would benefit me best or the experience that I needed to go through right now in this time in my life. So me and my husband, we both took an eighth of shrooms and our trips were completely different. It felt like a three day journey and me and him would like link up at certain times like in this in the same uh, dimension and we would just laugh but um, anyway his trip was completely a completely different experience than mine uh, but we were with each other the whole time and it felt like forever <laughs> um, so first of all um, I'm gonna start at like the most important point this was maybe like two hours into my trip I was sitting on the floor by myself and I uh, started feeling this anxiety in my chest this so it started getting so strong it, the only way I could describe it was existential dread and uh, so I took I took a little breather like I went to the bathroom and I looked at myself in the mirror I know people always say don't look at yourself in the mirror but I think you should because I think that you you should see some uh, some some clarity uh, in yourself or whatever I know some some people have seen their ancestors or whatever when they've looked in the mirror so that's a cool experience what I saw and I've always been obsessed with dragons um, and like the ethereal realm I get that I look like a fairy sometimes uh, but anyway so I'm really connected to that realm and so when I looked in the mirror I saw I saw myself and it wasn't like, the shrooms are not hallucinogenic, I don't care what anyone says, but you basically just see into different dimensions or different timelines in different dimensions, whatever you want to call it. But I saw myself as, like, a darker, like, reptilian type of species. Um, it, it was like a baby dragon. It was a baby dragon, but I was, I was a darker baby dragon than I had originally, like, thought I was. Um... And yeah, I saw like the reptilian eyes. I saw my, my face structure become uh, more reptilian and I had like darker, like grayish scales. And it wasn't like pronounced, like it wasn't like wearing a dragon head and like looking in the mirror type of thing. It was like, you can still see yourself, but you also see this other self of you. Meanwhile, my husband was um, staring at the corner of the wall and he was telling me that he can see multiple timelines, like there was a portal right there and he was seeing uh, different timelines and he said he could sense a timeline where there's ETs present and he was like in an observatory and whatever and he was pretty much just like voyaging around the house um, looking at cool shit and he said he, he went outside and we looked up and he saw like the grid matrix like the red dome like matrix uh, around the earth so that was pretty cool I didn't see that uh, like I said we both had really different trips so I started um, like I I was okay with this realization that I was like a reptilian being and um, I just sat there and like I kind of cried because it was just like some release it started happening and my husband was like what's wrong like are you okay and I was like yeah I'm realizing like I'm a baby dragon <laughs> and like it sounds so funny like in the moment like I was crying and he's just like laughing and 
you know, comforting me or whatever. So that, that was first of all what happened. And then, like, it started getting so intense. Um, and I, seriously, it was this, this deep, dark hopelessness, this eternal dread. So I started, like, almost having, like, a panic attack, like, an anxiety attack, and I, like, you know, try to talk myself down every time that happens. I'm like, Ash, you're fine. You know, uh, anxiety is the same vibration as excitement, like, transmuted into excitement. This shit's not that easy. Uh, so basically, I was trying to transmute this shit. I was like, okay, yeah, just bring it back to the light. Bring it back to the light. <laughs> and let me tell you, that shit was... It was like I was in a 3,000 foot hole and I was trying to claw my way back up and it wasn't fucking working. You know, that's that's what I preach about to everybody or I, I usually preach to everybody like if they were complaining or whatever, I'm like, oh, law of attraction, like you can vent, but then like bring it back to the light, you know, shadow work, like, oh, go through the darkness, like just like feel it and then like bring it back to the light. <laughs> and uh, from this experience, I realized like just how kind of unrealistic that is so what I did was I really really had to face this feeling like I knew that there was there was no other way like I know from all of the spiritual teachings and all that 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 is literally the only way to conquer the darkness is to really go deep deep into it and it was like so I've heard of people like wanting to commit suicide on shrooms and I truly understood what that felt like and what the what the mushroom showed me was I died like um, I was shown me killing myself shooting myself and like of course like I was seeing like multiple dimensions of things so I was this omnipresent consciousness void observing everything from the outside but I was also like I'm still also tapped into this reality too if that makes sense so like from this reality I was seeing like my family and my friends and my husband like super you know sad and everything that I died but from this other perspective of conscious like that's all I can describe it and I never really like fully understood consciousness before this trip because it was it's just it's such a vast thing it's like okay well you are consciousness okay well what the fuck does that feel like what, what is that you know so um i was literally i died but i still existed i i was now just back in this the the creator outer space before you're reincarnated again into a soul and or you know into a body and that feeling of dread of deep dread was still with me as this ball of consciousness like I was still me I still existed and I still felt this this dread and I knew it was like you know karma and all that or whatever like I knew I was about to be reincarnated into somebody who would then again have to face that and when I was a kid I felt the same feeling of dread um, when I was a little girl, I used to go up to my mom's room and knock on her door in the middle of the night, and I'd be like, Mommy, I'm scared of dying. I'm scared of how vast the universe is, because it was unfathomable, and it felt like, holy shit, I have to be here. Like, you know, part of me always kind of knew that, even as a kid, like, holy shit, I have to be here, and then one day I have to die, and the universe is infinite. Like, that's fucking scary. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, like, I can see the beauty in it, but it's also fucking scary, especially for a little kid who is just starting to understand that stuff. So that was, like, the biggest lesson that I got out of that part of the trip of me dying was, like, there's no way out of this feeling. There's no way, even if I killed myself, there's no way out of this feeling. And it, it felt so dark, so like strangling you know it's like you can't breathe your heart's racing you don't you feel like you're gonna die and in in my head I did die but anyway what that taught me was that I am worthy and this is gonna sound strange I think <laughs> because I exist 
and I exist no matter what. I don't have a fucking choice. I'm here, and I just am. And for the first time, like, I've al I always say that, and I know this spiritual lesson, but for the first time, I fully grasped it because I experienced it. And it was like, it was as if my spiritual journey has had completely started over. I, I'm, I was no longer all love and light. I, I, I know what it feels like to enter into that realm of complete, utter, dark hopelessness now. And it was beyond my three-dimensional, this reality problems. It was way beyond that. So it was absolutely insane. But then after, like, I, I kept letting the feeling feel. Like, I kept just being here for the feeling and feeling it so deeply and crying with it and just sitting with it. And uh, eventually, eventually, this took so long. It took so long. Like, it was so much harder than um, anything that I talk about, you know. Oh, bring it back to the light. No. You really have to fucking master that shit in order to emerge with a, with a speck of light. You know what I mean? And, like, I, I have always experienced the opposite in my sober sober life it's like oh there's there's light all around us and then there's just these little patches of darkness and you just give love to them and and then they go away it's like no this reality is full it, it's it's it needs balance it needs that that light yes the light that we all fucking are right and then that darkness that we have all fucking been i am a reptilian of some sort and, um, yeah, so the lesson that came out of that is not only, like, I just fucking exist because I have no choice to, and that makes me just as fucking worthy as anybody else, but also embrace the darkness, embrace your negativity, like, there is so much to come out of the darkness, out of the negativity, and honestly... You cannot fully emerge in light until you have mastered the darkness. Sorry, my phone just had a 20% uh, sign come up. <laughs> Alright, so that part was insane. I finally started feeling a little bit of love in my heart. And my husband, he's so sweet. He was like in his own little world too, but like trying to comfort me at the same time. And he's like, oh, Ash, I love your energy. Like, I just feel it pulsating from you and everything. And I'm just like, like, I, I couldn't even like say any, I couldn't speak for like three hours while this part of my trip was happening. It was so intense. It was so dreadful. Like, and I, I, I could listen to what my husband was saying, but I couldn't like, I couldn't thank him properly. I couldn't, um, I couldn't be in his trip with him at all, you know? Um, that's just how it works. But anyway, so the next lessons that I learned was, this was kind of like on the come down, like when you're still in a really vulnerable uh, state and like you're still seeing things from like um, a different perspective than the one that you normally see it, like you'll understand. So <laughs> I started picturing people's essences like the people in my life like their true essence like for who they truly are underneath this uh the construct of uh whatever you know my my 3d mind like paints them as you know? and and this type of paint this construct that we give people in this reality it has to do like it's affected by if they hurt us like our pain our suffering and blah, blah blah like none of that was there so I saw like my mom as like one of my soul sisters and like I know she's my mom and that's weird but like from in, in other like on a soul level she is my soul sister in a way like I know I've been her mom before in past lives and all that and like my sister in this life I saw like 
our blood and I felt and heard our blood pumping like at the same time because like we are so connected in blood and whatever and I saw her as like this strong woman figure like in my life or whatever and um obviously like I saw my husband like as my earth angel and he like helps guide me in this lifetime and then so I have issues um with my with my father uh especially right now in my life but like even just just growing up like he We'll just say that he has some distortions. He's got some shit going on, and I won't go into too much detail with that. But, um, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, got got some daddy issues. So, until this part of the trip, I was like, I'm not touching on the whole dad subject. Like, nope, I ain't going there. I'm already feeling, like, dread. <laughs> like, I ain't going there, you know. And uh, kind of by this by this time in the trip, like, me and my husband were both like, okay, when are we gonna be sober, you know, I kind of want to be sober again, like, this shit is really intense, like, I'm ready to be done, <laughs> but of course, it wouldn't be a successful trip if you didn't feel that way, right, <laughs> but anyway, so, then I saw my dad, for who he truly is, underneath the construct of, you know, the, this bad person that I painted him as in my head, um, underneath all the pain that he caused me and all that, and I saw him as, like, the roots, I saw in my head, him, his body being, like, the roots of a tree, he's, like, this shamanic, very divine masculine figure that is capable of nurturing and protecting and, um, yeah, it was, it was a very emotional experience for me, like, as soon as I saw this in my mind's eye, like, instantly, I was bawling to the point where, like, you know, you can't catch your breath type of bawling, and Kev was sleeping at this time, like, he would wake up every like, couple hours and, like, comfort me, but, um, overall, like, this was such an individual experience, so, uh, yeah, but I, I saw his true essence, like, underneath the narcissism and, like, the, um, you know, all of his judgments and whatever else he's placed on me and whatever, like, he, like, I saw his soul, like, him and, him and my soul, like, are, are friends, you know what I mean, and, like, he signed this contract to, um, to help me learn this lesson in this in this lifetime and you know at the at the time of my trip like what was going through my head after that was like him hugging me and like giving me that that um love that like I secretly yearn for from my father the shroom experience like gave that to me it gave me him hugging me like and and I in my trip I told him what I was seeing of of him like what I saw as his true essence and um obviously in my trip he was at a more vulnerable state as well um because he was able to like accept that information and it wouldn't it didn't feed his ego it instead like made him see um everything that he's done wrong essentially like in this lifetime and it broke him it broke his walls down and like uh, like, saved our relationship, or whatever, and, and, like, in my, during that time, I was, like, okay, so I need to, I need to actually tell him this, and whatever, like, I felt really strongly to, like, tell him, but, um, upon, upon waking, and, like, becoming sober again, like, I realized that, like, he's not ready for that yet, like, it would, it would probably just feed his ego, and, um, you know, it, I don't think it would really mend anything, partially because he thinks I'm crazy. So, but what lesson I learned from that really was, it was such a healing, a healing lesson. And like, I always talk all the time, again, in, in fluffy spirituality, like, um, you know, shadow work, like just feel it and, and, and then come, make sure to come back to the light and whatever. Like, no, like I thought I was healing this shit. He, <laughs> I was not healing this shit, like, not nearly as much as this one experience, um, yeah, so, it was, it was incredible, honestly, it was exactly what I needed, and it was, it was so painful, like, going through that entire experience, it was so painful, but it was also so healing, 
you know, and it gave me that, um, it gave me that, like, that parental, um, care for my inner child that I was, that I've been looking for, like, outside of myself, like, from him, but, like, I know it was really just me, like, giving that to myself, and I had to show myself that in the form of, like, my dad doing it, or, like, a parental, you know, figure doing that, so, yeah, I, I'm not gonna tell him that experience right now, I don't think he's ready for it, but, um, yeah, it, like, it helped me forgive him, and see, who he is on a soul level instead of in this um, reality. So I want to talk about two other lessons that I learned from this trip and one of them like I've been talking about throughout this video is spiritual ego and I didn't realize how much spiritual ego I still had. Um, for example, judging anything. I know a lot of people like in the spiritual community are like, y'all are y'all are tripping because you believe in christianity and you like politics and all this shit like but when i was in that state of consciousness like absolutely no judgments mattered at all like only what that person's essence is and i realized like it's not my job to tell them what they're doing wrong it's not my job to heal them or to help anybody unless they're asking me for help um and in the in the spiritual community i mean you're being a hypocrite if you judge anyone for doing anything like it's not, it's not your journey like we all signed up for this shit before we were even born so let them you know live out their karmas and learn the lessons that they came here to learn you can't impinge on that anyway so don't even try it was just, it was such a surrendering lesson of, like, how much ego I still truly had. And it really taught me that, like, uh, spirituality is the farthest thing from, like, fluffy goodness. It is, it is truly embracing your darkness, stepping so deep into the dark that you have no idea if you're gonna get out or not and then finally being able to see the contrast of the light once you dig and claw your way out of the darkness um the second lesson that i wanted to share well this is like the fifth lesson but <laughs> whatever is like it was a very um uh, like, the theme of the trip was, like, masculinity, and I have, before this, I've, like, just been embracing my, uh, divine femininity, and I, like, always thank the goddesses before I interact with plant medicine and stuff like that, and I'm, like, calling in all my goddesses and all that, and I think part of me had, like, this resistance towards, like, divine masculine, and there was an imbalance there, um, just the whole seeing my dad as, like, this grounded, I, th I think of, like, the root chakra, like, native drumming, um, that type of, like, divine and masculine, like, that's the type of healing that I actually needed. I feel like I give myself too much of that divine feminine healing, and, and that's what, um, where a lot of that, the fluffiness that I talked about comes from, is from an imbalance of the feminine and the masculine. So, um, not only, like, seeing, seeing, like, my dad is, like, that divine masculine or whatever, but just, uh, just the, the darkness, the doing, like, it really grounded me in such a way that, like, it was not a mushroom goddess, uh, helping me. It was definitely mushroom gods, and there was, um, it was just so much masculine energy, and I realized that, like, that was what I needed right now to, like, be, um, uh, to become more balanced in that way, and to become more grounded, so it, it also taught me to like go back to my very roots of spirituality. Like before I put on some of this facade of like being all light and everything. Like before then, I was a goth kid. I, I, I always loved like the darkness. I was comfortable in the darkness. I've always loved like the mystical ethereal realms. And I loved creating in that realm and everything. And my inner child wants that so bad. Like she misses that stuff, you know. And so instead of putting on this 
light facade of I have to be this way because I know it to be true and like I, I want to feel this way like well guess what I'm not I'm a balanced version of light and dark and I have been imbalanced with the light for too long so now I have to step into my darkness and embrace my darkness and that's not a negative negative thing it's not like I'm gonna go around murdering people or anything like that like I'm still a, a good person but like see and there, there you go there's another fucking judgment <laughs> I forgot where I was going with this embrace your darkness darkness is cool and and like I said you won't fully experience the light until you fully master the darkness so that is um, what I felt like sharing with you guys today and um, I hope you enjoyed my more authentic self. It feels so good, honestly. It feels so freaking good. And um, yeah, I hope this experience could help you at all in your life. Maybe you've had a similar experience or maybe I'm sure that you've had a vastly different experience. So I appreciate you guys watching this and I will see you next time and I hope you have a great day. Hey. Hey, Tukey. Oh yeah, and cats are from the 12th dimension. Okay, bye.